Hello, I'm Jeff Jones, one of the drive specialists at ESNE. In this video, we'll be reviewing the migration guide for converting a PowerFlex 700 drive to a PowerFlex 753 or 755 drive. But before we get rolling, make sure you like and subscribe to ESNE TV to see more videos like this one. When replacing a PowerFlex 700 drive with a 750 series drive, you need to consider the features and differences. Before we begin reviewing the migration guide, please be aware that this isn't meant to be fully comprehensive, but rather an overview focusing on 480 volts, 60 hertz, with standard carrier frequency settings. There are other specialized applications that will need to be reviewed in greater detail, such as those requiring higher than standard carrier frequencies high output frequencies, etc. Most of these are addressed in the guide. So let's get started by comparing the power ratings. Looking at the columns for each of the drives on page 8, you will see there are two columns for the 700 drives. The first column is the older series with non-vector control. These were sold back in the early 2000s, but most of you will probably have the Series B drives with flux vector control. This guide details all voltage and power ratings, but we are focusing on 480 volt power since it is by far the most prominent. You'll notice the 753 only goes to 400 horsepower normal duty. So if the 700 drive you have is larger than 400 horsepower normal duty, you'll need to use the 755 drive. I'd also like to point out that all 700 frame sizes come with DC terminals but for the 750 drives, these are optional for frame five and larger. Braking transistors are standard on frames zero through three for the 700 and frames two through five on the 750 drives. This is described on page nine and shown in detail in the power terminal block review section of the guide starting on page 35. Another power rating worth mentioning is the normal and heavy duty comparison. The overloads are the same for both in the normal duty configuration, but the 700 had a 200% for three second overload as compared to the 750, which has a 180% three second rating. One thing to note is the 750 drives now have a parameter that scales the power rating for normal and heavy duty, but the 700 drives did not have this parameter. It was only written on the nameplate. Comparing the performance of the 700 vector drive with each 750 drive, you'll see that the speed and torque regulations are the same. But in reviewing the features for the drives, you'll notice that the 750 drives have many more standard features than the 700 drives. When upgrading your system, you will notice that these drives are not the same physical size. So you'll need to do a dimensional review to find out if there are any hurdles that need addressing. Make sure to pay attention to the detailed dimension comparisons found on pages 13 through 29. These are based on voltages and amp ratings along with frame size comparisons. The 700 drives do come as Nebel 1 type drives, but the 750 drives are bought as standard in an open type design. For the 750 drive to be Nebel 1, you'll need to purchase a Nebel 1 kit. Frame size comparison, including Nebel 1 kits, start on page 19 of the guide. Summarizing the dimensions, you'll notice the 700 starts at frame zero and went to frame 10, where in this guide the 750 starts at frame two. There is a frame one 750 drive, but it has some limitations. For example, it can only be installed on a solidly grounded power distribution system. As a general rule, we decided to stock and lead with the frame two which covers the same power ratings. If you have space limitations, you could consider the frame one drive, but we should review the application and power system to ensure proper installation. Please keep in mind the 700 and the 750 drives do not have the same footprint, so always review the dimensions of the drive to make sure it will fit. For example, the 750 may be taller and or deeper than the 700 depending on the power rating. The PowerFlex 700 drive has I.O. on the main control board. The control voltage is either 24 volt or 120 volt. To change the control voltage of the 700 drive, you have to change the entire main control board. 
The PowerFlex 753s have some I.O. on the main control board, while the 755s come with one digital input. You can install optional I.O. boards on the 753 and 755 drives for both 120 volt and 24 volt control without having to change the entire main control board. The 750 drives have a few options for I.O. boards, but we typically stock and sell the 20-750-2262C-2R because it offers more I.O. The PowerFlex 700 vector control has the ability to add a single incremental encoder and a network card. The frame two and above 753 drives have three additional slots to add single incremental encoder, a dual incremental encoder, additional I.O. boards, network, and safe torque off cards. Frame two and above 755 drives have five slots to add options, which include all that can be used in the 753, but also a universal feedback card and network safety cards. Again, keep in mind the 755 comes with embedded ethernet. If you're considering a Frame 1 750 drive, please note that the 753 and 755 only allow three option boards. In this chapter, the guide reviews three examples of setting up the 700 drive, a 750 drive using the I.O. option module, and the 753 main control board using 24 volt DC control voltage. The three examples are three-wire control with analog speed follower, two-wire control with analog speed follower, and preset speed programming. When replacing a networked 700 drive with a 750 drive, the process will vary depending on the network and the controller being used. This guide doesn't go into step-by-step -step details, only general guidelines because there are so many different networks, controllers, and options. The 750 drives have 750 series communication cards, but you may also be able to reuse the existing communication card from the 700 drive by installing a 20-com carrier card option board. Here you can see the various 700 communication cards and their compatibility requirements and limitations for each of them if you decide to use the 700 series COM cards in the 750 drive with the 20 COM card adapter. This table shows the native 750 series COM cards. So if your network card isn't shown, you'll have to use the COM adapter and the 700 COM card if it is compatible with the 750 drive. Keep in mind the 755 drives have a single port embedded Ethernet communication card on the main control board. If your network is Ethernet, you might consider the 755 instead of buying a 753 with the 20-750-ENETR. Newer versions of Drive Executive and Drive Explorer can be used with the 750 drives. However, I encourage you to download Connected Components Workbench, otherwise known as CCW, which can be used with all PowerFlex drives and is free. When scaling reference and feedback data, there is a major difference between the 700 and the 750 drives. The 700 drives reference and feedback is a value from 0 to 32,767. 0 equals 0 hertz, and 32,767 equals the value in parameter 55, which is max frequency. The 750 drives are in engineering units and are dependent on parameter number 300, which is speed units. This will either be scaled in RPMs or Hertz. So a value of 30 would either be 30 Hertz or RPMs. The IO image varies depending on the communication card. So make sure to download the manual for the communication card you are using. The 750 native COM card manual may also be necessary to understand the data being passed from the drive to the controller. Keep in mind the 750 drives are 32-bit, but the 700 drives were 16-bit. So you'll have to address how to handle the 32-bit data if you have a 16-bit processor such as a PLC5. The knowledge base link below will help. Thanks for watching and I hope this overview of the PowerFlex Migration Guide was helpful. As always, myself and our ESNE specialist team are here to assist you with your projects.